So we all saw on opening night that the Sixers got off to a little bit of a rocky start, but tonight in their home opener against the Milwaukee Bucks, they have a great opportunity to bounce back, even though Giannis might give us 40. <laughs> Let's get to it. What's up, YouTube, and welcome back to the Sixers break room. Before we get into the video, don't forget to like this video and, of course, subscribe to the channel. The season is finally underway. This channel is about to pop off. I could just feel it, but in order for that to happen, one, I need to keep bringing y'all that good content, but number two, I need your support. So go ahead and hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and drop a comment. Just, just drop one now so you don't forget. Now, the Philadelphia 76ers, they got off to a start that, well, as a Sixers fan, I wasn't too happy about on Tuesday night. Now, I saw on social media, a lot of people felt like the sky was falling. I already got tweets that the roster is flawed and that we, we got to maybe move on from P.J. Tucker and change the way we think about him. Uh, maybe we need to start playing Paul Reed more. Maybe we need to switch up lineups, all kinds of stuff. And you know what? Ultimately, some of that might end up being true, but I'm not ready to go that far yet. It's only been one game against the defending Eastern Conference champion on the road. I mean, it, it, you know what I'm saying? It, a, a lot a lot was going against the Sixers in Game 1. And even, even beyond a lot going against the Sixers in Game 1, they were just going against a really good team. So I'm not surprised that we lost. I'm more surprised by the way that we looked. I hate it that our offense looked completely different than it did in the preseason. I hate it to, that Joel Embiid is very clearly out of shape. And I hate it that we got no actions for Tyrese Maxey. I feel like Doc Rivers just wants Maxey to go out there and find opportunities on his own. But if he's not, that's cool and all, right? But if he's not then you got to give him opportunities. You got to draw up some plays for him. You got to get him into some actions. We saw it sparingly, and when he when it happened, he was successful, but we just didn't see it enough. By the way, I'm sorry if you guys hear squeaking in the background. I got a puppy like two or three weeks ago. That's why the content kind of slowed down. I've been trying to make sure I take care of her and walk her when I need to walk her, and I can't take my eyes off her yet because she's chewing up stuff. So if you hear squeaking, it's Nola playing with a toy. Now, back to the game. This is an opportunity for the Sixers to bounce back and get a very important win. The reason why I say it's an important win, even though it's only the second game of the year, is because Milwaukee's not 100%. There's no Chris Middleton. I believe there's no Joe Ingles. And I think there's no Pat Connington tonight. So you're missing three key rotational pieces, and we're fully healthy. We got everybody ready to go. When you're playing against a team that's hurt, you got to capitalize. When you're coming off of the game we, we just came off of where the execution was poor and the effort was poor, we need to bounce back in a serious way. I'm not even so much concerned with the score. I want to see the body language improve. I want to see the communication improve. And at the end of the day, ugly win is better than a, a, a cute loss. We just have to get it done. We have to win tonight. I don't know how the hell we're going to stop Giannis. Tatum and Jalen Brown both went off for 35 against us, and neither one of those guys are as good as Giannis, but P.J. Tucker has given Giannis some trouble in the past. P.J. Tucker was a former teammate of Giannis, and I have a feeling he he probably knows what Giannis likes to do, his little tricks, the spots on the floor that he likes to get to. So I think P.J. Tucker is going to make it tough for him. He might get 40, but I hope it's a tough 40. Like, that might sound crazy. Crazy, but I'm okay with him getting 40 as long as he's not getting 40 on, on 30 shots. As long as he's not getting 40 on 25 shots, 15 uh, uh, free throws, 24. You know what I'm saying? Like, if he works for his 40, if he gets 40 points on less than 50% shooting, it is what it is. Even if he gets 40, we should win this game because I don't see them having enough weapons to score with us. If they're able to outscore us, it's because, once again, our defensive energy and our communication and, and, and just our our X's and O's defensively was just not there. The rotations were just not there. There's no reason why the Sixers should not come into this game a home opener with all the juice, health on your side, and you're going to have three of the best four players on the floor considering you're going to have Embiid, Harden, and Maxi. There's no reason why we shouldn't win this game. So I'm expecting a win tonight, but the thing that I'm looking at the most is the communication and the effort. It's got to be higher than it was on Tuesday. I want to hear from you guys, man. Sound off in the comment section below. What are you looking forward to most in this game? Like, I think this is a must win because of the health issues that they're having over in Milwaukee. But beyond the score, what are you looking for most? Like I said, for me, it's effort defensively. It's communication defensively. And, and, and it's just all around just more want. You know what I'm saying? Less standing around and more guys being part of the solution instead of standing around and becoming part of the problem. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below like i said if you like the video don't forget to like the video subscribe to the channel if you want to support in other ways that membership link is in the description below follow me on instagram and twitter at sixers break room and i'm gonna see y'all on the next one matter of fact i'm gonna see you guys at halftime forgot to mention i'm doing i'm doing
doing the live stream at halftime every game this year to talk about halftime adjustments with the coach. As you guys know, I coach, so I'm going to tell you how I see it, what I think we need to fix, what's working, what's not working, all that good stuff. So check that out at halftime, and I'm going to see you guys on the next one. Peace.